okay, I'm going to do my best not to use the microphone. Uh, when I get excited about things, I'm going to do a lot of this or anything. I talk about her. I'm trying to stay kind of in the middle here so I don't get the things here. Um, so if you can now hear me, though, please let me know. Um, as Mr. Stryker said, I am uh, Mr. Snyder, Justin Snyder. Um, I taught fifth grade for seven years, and I'm in my fourth year at the high school now. And for the record, the video that Dr. Green talked about, it never happened in the bank. It never happened. It's not such a thing out there. Um, you will never find it. I made a swear to secrecy. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do in our school. Uh, as I said, I'm very, very proud of it. I hope you see my excitement for our school when I talk about it. They gave me five minutes, and like Mr. Stryker said and, and Ms. Bruski said, this is not going to happen. Um, so I, that's probably bad news to some of you that want to get home. Um, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to talk pretty quickly, um, and I'll make myself available for questions and, and comments. So I, I kind of went through each content area, and at the top, obviously, is the content. But I just want to kind of show everything that we have a high school have to offer. Starting with math, um, we have AP Calculus. That was our first AP class um, that we offered at the high school. It was actually taught at the high school. Uh, we also have our college math. It's concurrent credit. We also do that in English. So uh, what that means is us and East Aurora are the only two schools in the Wabansi area that offer this. We encompass test, which is the placement test for community schools, um, to see kids where they would place within um, math and so, if kids do not meet, like if they, if they are not able to get into a credit bearing class, some students in math or English, you have to take that 050 or 060 and you have to pay a lot of money for it, but you do not receive credit. We, that is our, um, our English 4 and that's our math 4 class. So it's kind of like an overlap if you look at high school and college. We overlap there to ensure. That's not the only offering we have for seniors, we have AP Calculus. Um, and some other classes, but we want to make sure that students are ready to get a credit bearing class. It costs thirty dollars at Salmonac. It costs three hundred dollars at Wabansi. So you want to take it here um, while you can. And this will be the first year that we compass test on site. They're giving us we're the first school that's able to do that. The first high school that's able to do that. They actually administer the compass test. We took training um, so that we could instead of taking the kids to Wabansi, we compass test here. And that's the placement. We revise our scope and sequence, um, and now we really have four years of math available for any type of student, depending on what they want to do, whether it be community college, trade school, four-year college, whatever they're looking for, we can offer four years of math to students. And we have technology in the classroom. Like these pictures don't show very well. I was looking for back there. This is a smart board um, that all of our math teachers have. It's like a whiteboard, but it's digital, except for the computer. They can do a lot of different things. Um, and they also have Sentio clickers, which are, like if I want to pull the audience and I said, you know, how many people like my tie, you guys would give me the answers, good answers, right? And um, I'd see a graph of how many people like it, don't like it, I have multiple choice. So I can gauge my audience right away. I can see, you know, what questions we need to focus on. I was in a classroom you know, just the other day and they would ask some multiple choice. They're multiple choice, that's kind of the downfall, but at least they're, they're questions on kind of like your opening questions you start in a class and then you can see Okay, I think the example was 60% of the kids in the class in this prop four. So that's what the teacher started with. Okay, 100% get number one. They get it, we can move on, we don't have to waste time. So we have a lot of technology that we use in the classroom. Um, our English language arts class. So again, our class offerings. I talked about the concurrent credit. We have the same thing for English four. We have two honors classes presently, honors um, English three and honors English four. We're gonna do two future ones, honors English one and honors English Basically what we're going to do is we're going to open those up to students that are interested in taking them and we're going to give them a, a little placement exam, have them analyze a piece of text, see what they know, and you will give us a writing example. And it's something that if, it's, if they're not being successful in that class, we can move them out of the semester to a regular English class. We just don't want to limit these opportunities to kids that um, quote unquote get trapped. So you have that opportunity every year. Currently we have film and speech electives and we do have four years of Spanish available in our high school. The literacy, literacy, literacy. 
Um, this here is a picture of kids camping out in an Antigone scene. Um, and it's something that, it's, in, it's very enjoyable for me to come watch. You think, okay, why are high school kids acting out stories or you know, whatever it may be? It's, it's great, because the kids get into character, and I don't just mean physically get into character, they really get into it, they understand what's going on, and stuff like Antigone, Romeo and Juliet, it's hard text to read, they act it out, and after every scene, the discussions that I see from kids when they're doing something like this versus reading the book are just so much more live and active. The kids are talking about it. Um, and when I say literacy, we're going much deeper into text. Okay? The easiest example that I use is Winnie the Pooh. We've all read Winnie the Pooh. Okay? We all know the story. Um, it's, but there's so much more deeper into that. There's symbolism, there's themes, there's metaphors, there's figurative language. There's an author's purpose. Um, even like something like Dr. Seuss. All the Dr. Seuss books were written with a political motive. Some of you know that, some of you don't know that. But you can take something as simple as a Dr. Seuss book, and it's kind of a starting point, a short story point, so that kids can understand um, that there's political motives. Uh, Four Years Ago was written, I believe, something within response to Japan in World War II, and there's just this big political motive. So you take text that kids understand, you apply it to that, and then they get into the bigger novels. They go deeper, and then they're able to analyze those. Have we spit on anyone yet? <laughs> Sorry to get excited. Um, so that's our English language arts. Our sciences. Really cool things going on in science right now. You have your offerings here? Basically, what's happening? I'll take our physics class, for example. On any given day, you walk into a physics classroom, and the kids are basically figuring out their own form it's funny because I am, and then they're observing and I hear kids talking to one of the, you know, and they're saying, Becky might vouch for this. <sighs> he doesn't teach us anything. He makes us do everything. And, but then again, you hear him talking and what they're talking about is way above my head. It's great. So basically he poses a question. He gives them the, the materials. They get into groups. They solve the problem. They develop the formula on their own. They're not standing here as a teacher saying, here's how you figure out the distance and where they're going to be. They're figuring out on their own. Um, and then they're reporting out to the group. So now their exam, they're getting tested on formulas and equations that they figured out in the classroom. What a concept, right? It's what we call problem-based learning. So it's really, really neat. It makes it definitely more meaningful. He's experimenting with it this year, that kind of teaching method. Um, you can't go as quickly, but it's so much more meaningful and neat. Our social studies classes. Uh, we offer a lot of classes within social studies. This is where we're doing our technology pilot that um, Dr. Green and our princi other principals have talked about. One-to-one -to -one devices um, in our honors or our AP US history, those students have either an iPad or a, um, a laptop or something to look at. And what they're doing is they're looking at document-based questions. This is what we kind of adapted for what colleges do. And you, you, you college, you see a lot of it is reading and writing and answering with essays. So you pose a question, you give them primary and secondary sources, the teacher teaches them about how to analyze what the difference between a primary and secondary source is. They take the information, they learn how to cite it, how to put it in a written format, and they come up with their own conclusions and write it out. Last year, this is our first year of AP US history, it's our second AP class. Last year we had a student take it on her own with the teacher's guidance. Four to five, that's the best you can do, and that's not full percent, which is pretty awesome. That was on her own without even having the class that we have now. There's definitely an increase of reading and writing, like I talked about with the document based questions. You're going to see a theme. There's a lot more reading and writing. Um, we have to stop telling students, and it has to go away from the memorization. Okay, I'm going to teach you um, the sciences, the, the social studies, math, the reading, the, the novels. Um, like when I was in school in English, I just, I was not a good reader, but I listened to what the teacher said. Okay, this was the theme. Okay, this is the symbolism. And I got it right on the test because I spit it back out on the test. It's basically what I did. But now there's additional text. Kids are having to read on their own. Um, it's all about literacy. We want our kids to leave here being literate, whether it's fiction or nonfiction text. We want them to be able to be literate. One of the things with being literate is when you encounter a word that you don't understand, what do you do? Um, when I was in school, I had to memorize a list of words. 
That's kind of ancient now. It's going away. We need to teach them, and if you look at prefixes and suffixes and word they should learn that in elementary school and in, in middle school, but they get more complex. And if you know what those are, you know how to make meanings, maybe you recognize a prefix or a suffix or a word root, you can then use the context clues within the sentence and make meaning of it. So now we're giving them tools to learn every word, not just 20 words that are on a list for a unit. The other thing that I want to talk about is our work ethic pilot. This, this picture is, um, I got it just right. I know it's hard to see, but we have the work ethic here. We have Um, and they're, they're also incorporating research projects. Is there a vocational? 
middle class. They do job shadowing, they do cooking, they started their own business, shredding and recycling. Again, employability skill development. Our guidance counselor does a whole lot of things. Um, she meets with kids individually um, in eighth grade. She provides education to about the, the e passes here, explore, plan, and ACT. How many people take the ACT in their lives? Taking that? Okay. So we take that here. Um, back when I was in school, it was kind of optional, and I actually came here to that gym with the big fans on. So again, a lot of you are laughing because you remember doing that. She taught the explore and the planner tests that are kind of equivalent to the ACT. She talks to the freshmen and sophomores in eighth grade about those tests and how to read their results. And then she talks to individual juniors. She does the scheduling, college and career planning, financial aid, and finish the FAFSA night. She has a junior parent night. Uh, she has postgraduate meeting, uh, planning meetings with seniors. She has a scholarship group every Tuesday afternoon. And she monitors our dual credit, our inner, uh, Illinois Virtual School and credit recovery classes. The IB, IBS is Illinois Virtual School. I'm telling you about that because if we don't offer something here, and I'm starting to talk faster and louder, if we don't offer something here that you need, you can get that online. We have online courses for kids. We have a lot of clubs and organizations. I won't read them all, but there's a few of them. This picture here is a couple of our NHS kids. You can see the most active back there. One of them in the picture. Uh, this is Mr. Lichty. Uh, Ms. Mormon. And our NHS does a blood drive and they made $500 from it. And they decided to give it back to the school. So they had mini grants. Um, teachers do a
probably doesn't mean all that much to all of you. But what I will say is, I've talked to teachers uh, who are no longer teaching here because they want the location closer to home, whatever it may be. And I can tell you, every teacher that leaves, they go there. Whether they're our best or they're our worst, they become a leader with that faculty because of what we do here. The things that we do here with this professional development and everything we do. The classes I took in school, the writing classes I took, I was more prepared than anyone else. And it's not because of me. Something you want different? Tell me, because I want it to be better. 